How's it going guys, TexHD here with my final ratings review, and this video guys we are looking at the top 10 centers in NHL 17. Starting off the list, at number 10 we have Claude Giroux, now a 91 overall, he's actually gone up one from last year, kind of surprised by that, um, obviously last year he had a solid season, but it wasn't amazing or anything, so uh, surprised that uh, they actually gave him a plus one for it, but still, uh, plus one or minus one isn't you know a huge deal. Um, he's a 90 overall before that, so... Uh, going up one from last year, I probably would have kept him at 90, but 91 still fair. For individual stats, he has 93 deking as well as 94 puck control. It also says here he has 5-star skating, but he's not the fastest player ever. He's just a very good skater. He's got that high acceleration, agility, uh, things like that. So obviously, Drew is a very, very good player. Uh, personally, for me, top 10, that's hard to say. I think this is the first time in a while he's been in the top 10 centers uh, for NHL games, but I'd probably have him 11 or 12. I don't know if you'd quite make my top 10 list. Uh, I'll probably have to think about that at the end of the video. At number 9 here, guys, we have Nicholas Backstrom, also 91 overall, and he also went up one from last year when he was a 90. Really good hands on him as well. He's got 94 puck control and 94 passing. Obviously, uh, the Capitals' number one center. Big reason why the Capitals were so successful last season. He had a very solid season, so I think uh, Backstrom probably deserves that plus one a bit more than Giroux. But in saying that, I think he only had like five points more or something in like a couple less games, so it's pretty close. Uh, that's probably kind of why they gave Drew the upgrade. If they figured if they're giving Backstrom one, Drew was right there. But I think Backstrom is slightly better center, uh, definitely better playmaker. I think Drew's got the better hands, and probably a bit you know grittier, a bit more feisty, which I kind of like. But uh, two very good centers, so ten and nine, can't really complain. At number eight here, guys, we have our first downgrade in Ryan Getzlaff. Now a ninety-one overall, down one from last year, and he was a ninety-two. He still has five-star puck skills and five-star physical. He's one of the best power forward centers in the game. He also has a very hard shot on him with 91 slap shot power and 90 wrist shot power. So a really good center, still top 10 worthy, but last season wasn't his best. So the downgrade makes sense. Obviously, he's looking to uh, rebound from that this season, so we'll see how that goes. But I definitely think Getzlav is still a top 10 center. Next guy's at number 7 here. This is probably the biggest surprise so far. We have Tyler Sagan, now a 92 overall. He's actually down one from last year when he was a 93, which really makes no sense to me. Uh, he had over a point per game this year. Um, pretty much a point per game. He was one point more uh, than games played, but I think Sagan is one of the best centers in the game. A point per game, or more than a point per game, and he somehow gets downgraded. Makes no sense to me. Uh, very good player. He helped Dallas. Uh, really play like amazing this year. It's one of the best seasons they've had in probably the last five or so years, and I just don't understand this downgrade at all. I think at least he should have stayed at 93. Uh, 93 is a very high rating, but Tyler Sagan is a very good player, so that doesn't make sense to me. Maybe you guys can help me out with that one. Uh, he's still keeping, though, his 93 wrist shot power and 92 slap shot power like Getzlav. Very good shot on him, but I just don't understand this one. Uh, point per game season, gets a downgrade. I don't know what he has to do. Now, guys, number six, we have Evgeny Malkin, 93 overall. He's actually up one from last year, and he was a 92. And this one's surprising. Like I was just saying, last year, Sagan had a point per game, and he went down one from a 93 to a 92. Malkin also put up a point per game, but he had 20 less games played, and he went from a 92 to a 93. So it doesn't make sense to me. Obviously, Malkin went further in this playoffs. He won the Stanley Cup, but uh, that's a team effort, so I don't understand these ratings at all. I think they should both be 93. I think that's more fair. Uh, when Malkin's healthy, he's obviously one of the best centers in the game. Uh, to think easily a top five center. So don't understand this one. Um, I don't like. I, I don't get it. Uh, two guys point per game seasons. One drops one overall. The other games an overall. Um, obviously, I do think they're both very close. I think they should, like I said, should both be a 93. Moving on now, guys, to the top five. At number five, we have John Tavares. Now a 93 overall. He's actually up one from last year, just like Malkin. He has five-star puck skills, five-star shooting, and five-star senses. So obviously one of the best centers in the game. I think his two-way game gets uh, underestimated a lot. He's, I think, very good defensively. And like I said, one of the best centers in the game. Still young. Just keeps getting better. One thing that kind of doesn't make sense to me. It's been this way, I think, since Tavares has been in NHL, is they always have his skating stats not that great. Like, you can see here, they gave him 85 speed, 85 acceleration, uh, and they even said in, like, his little player bio on the article that he doesn't have the greatest of skating, but, like, I've watched him play once live, and obviously a good amount on TV, and I've never noticed that Tavares was a bad skater, so maybe you guys can fill me in on that. Let me know, is Tavares a worse skater than I'm seeing on the ice, or are they getting it wrong here, and Tavares should have slightly better skating? Because in my opinion, he should have better skating, and he's one of the best centers in the game, and I don't think his skating is an issue at all. Now he's number four here with Anze Kopitar, also a 93, also up one from last year, and he was a 92. One of the best two-way centers in the game, uh, just a very strong center, super good offensively, super good defensively, just a very solid all-around game. Unfortunately for him, they didn't give us any extra information on individual stats, but obviously he's plus one from last year, so it'll probably look something similar uh, to his 92 rating we see here. Very good season last year, almost a point per game. And he's obviously a very good two-way center, so almost a point for game from him, while also dominating both zones of the or both ends of the ice, I should say. 
Uh, I think the plus one rating definitely deserved. Now, guys, number three, here we have Steven Stamkos now at 94 overall. He's actually plus one from last year. Really surprising to me. Um, he had a good season last year, but definitely wasn't great. Uh, I don't know how it warrants a plus one, especially when you start getting higher overalls, you have to have a better season to justify that jump. So, like, if somebody with an 85 overall rating had the season he had, they'd go to, like, an 87 or an 88. But when somebody's 93 overall and they have the season he has, I'd think they'd stay the same. Somehow... He's now a 94, so it doesn't really make much sense to me. On um, regards to his stats, guys, he has 5-star puck skills, shooting, skating, and senses. Obviously, a very good center, sometimes plays wing. Amazing shot on him, two-time Reese Richard uh, trophy winner. Uh, obviously, he had a bit of injuries last year, but still, um, very good center. Like I said, I'm not taking anything away from Stamkos. I think he's a top-5 center in the game. I just don't think he deserved an upgrade. I think he should have stayed at 93. Now, guys, number two here. This is another one I don't really agree with. Jonathan Taze is keeping his 94 overall rating. Uh, the same rating he had in NHL 16. Last year, I thought it was a bit of an overrating, as he is a very good two-way center. Everyone knows that. Arguably the best, you know, two-way center in the game. But offensively, he hasn't really done that much for the last few years. He still produces a good amount, like 50, 60 points. But um, in terms of actually being, like, you know, a 94 overall center, you'd think you'd have to do both score a lot and be amazing defensively, kind of like a Kopitar player. So I think of Taze more like a Bergeron, who's not even on the top 10 list, which is really surprising. Um... So Taze is 94 here. What would I give him? I'd probably give him at like at least a 93. He's definitely not a 94. Maybe even a 92. I'm not even saying Taze is bad. I'm just saying when you get that high rated, like you have to be amazing. And I don't really know if Taze uh, fits that bill. Maybe one time when he was, you know, point per game. But I think now he's more. He's a lot more defensively as he's gotten older. So still a really good center. Not quite a 94 for me. 92 or 93 uh, in my personal opinion. Now, guys, everyone already knows who's coming. Number one signer in the game, Sidney Crosby, now a 95 overall. He's actually dropped down one from last year, which is a bit surprising, but I'm not really too upset about it as he's still the best player in the game, the only 95 overall player after him. Uh, there's like four or five guys at 94, I forget exactly, but uh, he sits alone atop the number one spot, which makes sense. Uh, Con Smythe winner, he rallied uh, last year so hard. I think he was like out of the top 50 in scoring or like somewhere around the top 50 in the first half of the season and he just started like scoring so much ended up I think second second or third in points with 85 points in 80 games uh, which is just a crazy uh, second half of the season Conn Smythe Trophy winner Stanley Cup winner two Stanley Cups now two gold medals my personal opinion he's the best player in the world uh, deserves to sit alone at the top of that list at 95 uh, getting the downgrade I think it's probably more with them wanting lower ratings than him being a 96 or him getting worse, I should say. Uh, having said that, though, there's a lot of guys that got upgrades I didn't really think deserved upgrades, so I'm not exactly sure what they're doing there, but 95 for Crosby, can't complain. I think that makes sense. Uh, he's the best player in the game. EA shows that, and uh, I'm happy with it. So in regards to my top 10 list, guys, obviously I thought this list was pretty good, but I did disagree with a few things. Uh, at number 10, I think I would have Bergeron over Giroux. I think he's a very good two-way center. And I think he would crack that top 10 over Giroux. I think Giroux's a bit better offensively, but Bergeron's much better defensively. And that probably gives him the edge. Maybe they're both 91 overall, but Bergeron has like better individual stats. That's how close it'd be, but I think Bergeron would get that edge. At number 9, I would still keep Backstrom at a 91. Um, at number 8, I would have Ryan Getzlaff still at a 91. Uh, number 7, this is where it would change. I would actually have Jonathan Taze at number 7. So a big drop from him going from 2 to 7, but kind of similar to Bergeron, I feel like Taze isn't that much offensively better than Bergeron, so I don't see why he was so much higher rated, and I think they're both about par in terms of defense, so dropping that much, obviously I think he would drop from a 94 to a 92, so still a very good center, just not as good as they have him listed here. At number 6, I would have Tyler Sagan, obviously very, very good center, so he's only going up one spot, but I'd, but I'd make him a 93 again, like I said earlier, no idea why he dropped uh, 1 overall. At number 5, I'd have Stamkos, he'd also be dropping down from 94 to 93, I said this earlier, don't know why he got a boost from 93 to 94 when he had a good season, but not a great season. Uh, number four would be Malkin, keeping his 93 rating, but I think Malkin has really shown when he's healthy, he's one of the best centers in the game, uh, without question. Uh, he's won an Art Ross, he's won like all the awards to show it. Uh, if he can stay healthy, he's about one of the best centers in the game. And I mean, it doesn't really seem like they're taking health into consideration for the overalls, so I think that makes sense to have him at four. Number three would be Tavares. Pretty big jump from him. Uh, he'd still stay 93 overall, but I think just individual stats, I'd probably just rank Tavares the third best center. And number two guys would have Kopitar also keeping his 93 rating, but I think he probably is uh, the second best center in the game right now. He's just that good. Almost a point per game season. Very, very good defensively. 
I don't know if he's quite as good as Taysom Bergeron, but he's definitely more physical, and the fact that he just produces more offensively kind of gives him that all-around better edge, making him, in my opinion, the number two center in the game. And of course, at number one, we would keep Crosby. Keep the 95 rating. 96 might be a bit too uh, drastic, but definitely keep him number one. So anyway, guys, those are my opinions on the top 10 centers in NHL 17. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, leave a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a nice day. Goodbye.